Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. So, I'm out in not so sunny Southern California. Well, it is the morning, um, probably about 7 a.m. And uh, it's a Saturday, so I'm about ready to head out to the studio with Master Dave Kama at our Kama Jiu Jitsu Irvine studio. Now, uh, for those of you who are in the area, please come by and check us out. We have three campuses, one in Southern California, Kama Jiu Jitsu Irvine. We have one in Dallas, Texas, or Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, called Kama Jiu Jitsu Dallas, Fort Worth. And we have one in the city of Austin, Kama Jiu Jitsu Austin, Texas. Now, today's topic uh, is from a YouTube subscriber, named Ampora. What should we look out for if we would like to get some mats at home or for our dojo? Mat thickness, um, mat strength, uh, material, um, and thanks for another great informative video. Uh, I don't know what video that was, um, but anyway, it's a good valid question. Um, I think many of you are wondering that. And you know, here's the thing, I've had mats in my house since 1994. And I've always been the guy that had the mats in the house. And the way I look at it, it was this, uh, is this. You know, as long as I have mats, I know that I can always train. Because I know so many people that do jujitsu, and I can just call them up and say, come on down, let's train. Um, <laughs> I guess kind of like uh, when I was a kid and, uh, you know, I'm trying to find something to do. You know, just pick up the phone and start dialing and say, what are you doing? Nothing. All right, let's do something. Oh, I'm busy. Okay, hang up, click. Go to the next person. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. You know, it's just, and just, it's the same thing with jujitsu. You know, you can get a lot of friends with jujitsu. There's sometimes no better way to make friends than with jujitsu. And having mats makes things really easy. Also, for me, I have a home studio and it allows me to do my privates at home. So I don't have to drive 20, 30 minutes to the studio to do a private. Also, uh, Master Dave does the same thing. He's got mats in his backyard, and it's not, you know, not uncommon for us to you know, be in the backyard training. So, what kind of mats do you get? Well, there are a number of types of mats, and it really comes down to how your studio is laid out. So, first of all, you have to ask yourself, am I going to be putting the mats on concrete? Am I going to be putting them on carpet? Am I going to be putting them on a wood floor? Am I going to be putting them on the second floor? That's also kind of interesting. So I'll tell you what I have. At my home, I have my studio, where my mats are, on the second floor of my house. Uh, it's not like second floor of, a, of an apartment building or condominium, which often are concrete. So that would then, what would apply then is, you know, putting your mats on concrete. So my second floor is, you know, whatever they use for joists um, on a second floor house. It's, you know, plywood underneath the carpet. And then I've got, um, I think I've got a half an inch or one inch of foam and then uh, premium grade carpet and then my mat. So as a result of that, I bought mats that were only one inch thick. My mats are Easy Flex. They're the rollout mats. So I have two pieces and they're, I guess, six foot by 19 foot with uh, the Velcro tape in the middle that holds them together. So I end up having a space that's 12 feet by 19 feet. And that size is good for about, I'd say you could have about three pairs training. It's a little tight. Uh, two pairs is a lot easier. And obviously one pair of guys is really easy. It's more than enough. But if you're just gonna be training you and someone else, typically, a good size to start with is 10 by 10 you know and what i did was i originally had these mats that were the fold up mats the ones that folded up into i don't know quarters and they were two pieces five foot by ten foot and the brand that i got that i bought was called tiffin t-i-f-f-i-n um, i think they're still in business and i got those mats i had two sets of those mats um, the first set of mats i had were one and a quarter inches and I set them on concrete, no, no, well, on carpet and then on concrete. So, um, so that was at my first house in the Los Angeles area. So it was uh, the concrete floor, first floor foundation, and then the half inch of carpet padding, and then the actual carpet, and then my mat on top of it. And that mat I kind of stored off to the side in my living room, but I had a nice 
open area living room and I didn't put furniture in it for the purpose of my mats. And what I do is I just slide the pieces out. I had two of them, five by 10, and they had Velcro uh, connection points uh, on, you know, one side had the male, one side had the female and, or I don't know, the hook, I don't know how they call it. But anyway, so I just, uh, when friends would come over, I just open them up, lay them together and pat the connection point down. And then I'd have a nice 10 by 10 square. Now, when I moved to Orange County, I ended up getting rid of those mats. I ended up giving them to my cousin and uh, we shipped them to Hawaii for him. He wanted some mats. And the reason is because the next place that I lived, I put the mats on concrete in my garage. So what I needed was I wanted thicker mats. So um, a friend of mine had mats that were two and a half inches thick and they were, they were pretty soft and they were a little slow. I mean, you couldn't, you could do stuff on the feet, but it just wasn't, it just felt slow is what it is. So what I did was I bought uh, two inch mats uh, from Tiffin as well, called them up and said, hey, I need uh, uh, two five by 10 pieces for my garage. And they were two inches instead of the one and a quarter. And those actually felt pretty good. I mean, they were, they were hard enough to where you could do stand up stuff on it, but not sink into them. And they were soft enough to where when we did throws, on the mat on concrete it wasn't really jarring so the one and a quarters you know i know how to fall but it doesn't mean that i want to fall on something really hard uh, so i got the two inch mats and they were perfect and they were i liked them so much i ended up buying a third piece so i ended up having three five by ten pieces that i put together so i ended up having a 10 by 15 space and that is the the mat space that uh, master dave professor fernando and i would train on uh, Sundays in my garage. You know, I, you know, that's, I just got up in the morning and set up the three pieces and we trained on it. We had plenty of room with uh, 10 by 15 feet. I ended up selling those mats to a student of mine. And, um, and that was because when I brought them to Texas with me and when I moved to the current house I'm in, that's where I bought my current setup, which are the one inch Easy Flex mats on the second floor of my house. Um, you know, which is a, a wood, um, a wood, wooden floor, it's plywood, uh, and then the, uh, the carpet padding, a carpet, and then the actual mat. Now, as far as studio, um, some people, they want to go studio style, and a lot of people use those Easy Flex, or there's another brand called Dolomer, which I think was the original one that did that, uh, the rollout mats type, um, and <clears throat> you can go with, I want to say one and five eighths inch, instead of the one inch like I have in the house. Uh, one location that we were at had them, uh, two locations, had the, the Dolomer one and five eighths inch mats, the rollouts on concrete. They're not bad, uh, they're just not good. And, but you know, they're perfectly fine and suitable. You can't, you can't really go wrong with them. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, they're much better than one location that we were located in, in Dallas, where they had one inch, um, tatami style mats and I'll go over those in a second but they were one inch on concrete so they were very fast I mean they were they were meant for taekwondo and it was hard for me to teach students how to do break falls and stuff on there. I mean break falls are easy but as far as throws um, we could only do a few throws a few reps per class because you know it just uh, you get jarred by it you know it just doesn't feel super good getting thrown on them <clears throat> So I knew, I knew that I didn't want one inch on concrete. That's, that's how I found out that. So at the studio in Dallas and in Austin, we have a suspended mat system, which means that we have, um, I guess, four inch foam pieces on the ground. We have a plywood system on top of that, uh, two layers of plywood. So two layers of, is it one inch? I can't remember if it's half inch or one inch thick plywood, maybe three quarter. That's not super important. And then followed by um, in Flower Mound's case, Dallas, we have uh, one and a quarter, I think one and a quarter or one and a half inch tatami style mats from Fuji. Uh, tatami style mats are the ones that are in rectangular pieces. They're one meter by two meters in size. Uh, and you know we have them fitted. We had we, to, we put together a frame uh, to house it all. And it took a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of money to put those together. And we also have the one in Austin. And but instead of it's the same thing underneath the mat. But instead of going with Fuji mats, we went with zebra mats. Now, 
Are they different? Yeah, they're a little different, but it really just comes down to the deal that you can get or that you want to get um, buying these mats because you buy enough of them, they get to be pretty expensive, you know, in the you know five-digit range. <laughs> um, so that's what we did. We did suspended mat systems in <clears throat> in our two Texas studios, and in our California studio, we have three rows of Easy Flex rollout mats. Uh, Master Dave Kama's house, his studio in the backyard, is also Easy Flex rollout mats, and we use the one and five eighths uh, mats. And you know they're good. Uh, and I want to say that in our Irvine studio, there actually is. I don't know. I can't remember right now if it's a rubber flooring and then the mats on top or if it's um, uh, industrial carpet and then the mats on it. So um, it's, it's relatively comfortable. So, you know, it's not really a bad thing. So I hope that kind of answered your question. As far as the, oh, no, one more. As far as the vinyl covering on top, they're all durable. I, don't, I really wouldn't worry about you breaking them or tearing them unless you put objects on the mat, which we never do. So I never have any kind of metal objects on the mat um, so that it won't tear them. So I know that if you do martial arts with, um, with the weapons, you know, they, I think they were called size. I'm not sure. They, they look like a, like, a, like a pitchfork, right? You know, one long one center and then two short ones on the side. Um, I know sometimes uh, those will get dropped on the mat in a previous location we were at that we were using. And they would often cut their mats up and they'd have to put tape on it, <laughs> which didn't look all that good. Uh, but yeah, it's just because they allowed metal things on the mat, which then made the mats tear. As long as you be careful on that front, if you're just gonna do jujitsu and judo on them, the mats will last you pretty much a lifetime, unless you're always, you leave them outdoors, which you don't really wanna do. And if you don't clean them, you don't take care of them. Uh, they're, they're relatively maintenance free, just clean them and they'll, they'll last for a long time. So anyway, I hope that answered your question as far as my, oh, one, sorry, keep forgetting. Puzzle mats. Would I do puzzle mats? No, not a fan of those. Um, they're, they're, their surface tends to absorb liquids, so it's not easy to clean them. And they're really meant for shoes. And now I, I have seen them used in a pinch. I'm not really a fan myself. So no, I'm not, I'm not recommending those at all. Um, but you know, you can get creative with the colors and all that, but you know, it doesn't matter for me. It's comfort and practicality and I don't ever put shoes on them uh, on our, on my mat. So I don't need shoes that can withstand or I don't need mats that can withstand shoes. And I guess one other option that I didn't like was, um, like a canvas cover. So way, 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 way back in the old days, I think the Gracie family would use a canvas cover. In fact, you see a lot of their videos, they have a, a canvas cover over their mat, whatever they're training on. They lay the mat down and put a canvas cover on top of it. Yeah, um, the reason why I don't like that is because we sweat a lot. And how are you gonna wash that thing, right? Not easy to wash a canvas. Um, I guess if you have a big industrial washing machine, I guess you could do it, but uh, not really the best choice in my opinion, not necessarily the most hygienic choice. So that's really all I got for you as far as the mats. And I'd say invest in them. I, I'd say you wanna be the guy who owns the mats so that whenever you wanna train, you can always make some calls and have people come over. They're not that expensive if you think of uh, how many years you'll be owning it. You know, I think for the, the first two setups I had with the fold-out mats, they were less than $1,000 shipped and I had those mats maybe 20 years. So it's well, it was well worth my money. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Take care, happy training. Come see us at kamajujitsuonline.com. We'd love to see you online. Take care, bye-bye.